good. You are looking good, Olivia. <laughs> and I feel like I'm the queen of the world. It will be hard, we know, that the road will be muddy and rough, but we will get. Hi, 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 hi. Mm. You're welcome to this evening's education. We are literally going to understand the part two of understanding love, true self-love in a relationship. Now, this is to let you understand that without self-love, it would be difficult to have the best in your relationship. I always believe that the majority of what needs to be done in a relationship is you loving yourself first. You understanding yourself, avoiding or getting over identity crisis. Knowing that knowing yourself is what will help to push the relationship to a progressive life. And self-love simply means self-care, kindness, self-acceptance, you know, or even maybe self-worth, how you understand your self-worth. And sometimes self-love can be about how you think and feel about yourself. A positive self-love is when you have positive thoughts, positive feelings, and you emulate positive behaviors for yourself. And a negative self-love is when you have negative thoughts, low self-esteem, you know, uh, overcompensating, being too nice, and at the end of the day, losing your identity in whatever situation or event you find yourself. So in short, if you want to have a good relationship, if you want to have the best of a relationship, you need to first know who you are, what you want, what you do not want, because I know there are some people who know what they want and not what they do not want. So you need to know what you want, what you do not want, what you're looking for in this relationship by looking into yourself, understanding your values, your standards, your convictions, everything that actually makes you know that you are where you belong. And a lot of times when you have gained your self-love or you, when you have um, constantly or frequently emulated self-love, you just, merge into this relationship because finding yourself in a relationship is part of a self-love right so i'm assuming that you might have gone through all the scrutinizing processes in choosing a partner and you just show up into this relationship and you're living your life it doesn't actually create a very big change it merges like just it flows because this is you and you are more like, I'm finding someone who is quite like me, someone who is like-minded like me, someone that we share the same values and convictions and dreams and goals. And even if it's not too much, the more we work together, we can accomplish greater things. A lot of times, self-love means just showing up and knowing what you bring to the table. You are just also being yourself. And it, it, it gives off the energy of living in your softness like example yeah i know <laughs> so there are six key components that count for self-love or self-compassion now i was just flexing i'm just flexing don't mind me but <laughs> girls are we ready are we ready mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring ambience <laughs> okay well, first of all there's self-kindness and it's about being caring, tender, understanding, and then, you know, showing yourself love and, and then always having gratitude in your heart. For example, self-love is, um, is when you have so much love for yourself that you're able to forgive yourself and let go. You know, self-love is, self is more of you being, um, you know, comforting of yourself, encouraging yourself through the heart and very troubling times because you can only love yourself through the hard times or through the difficult times that makes you know that yeah you are there for yourself. There is self-judgment, being able to know yeah I'm a human being, I have flaws, incapabilities or inabilities but I would still not judge myself too hard. There are other people who are so hard on themselves to the extent that they find it very hard to move past a mistake 
or an experience they feel that they should never have done this mistake and they were too stupid or they were being fooled or whatever that it is they they really reduce their intelligence and their wholeness just because of that mistake and so in order for you to count as a self-loving person you need number two to have self-judgment and this self-judgment has to be what balanced number three is common humanity understanding that whatever it is that you are going through in life someone else is going through the same thing and then when you look at others you get inspired when you when you look at others you feel that you can also make it like other people's experiences paves way for you to show yourself more love okay so you, you you are also able to do things for other people like it shows common humanity if you can love yourself you can love other people but if you don't love yourself it's so hard to extend love and kindness and care or speak nice to other people because you do not even do that for yourself number four is mindfulness are you mindful are you seeking balance in your spirituality so for example i bought this some few days ago <laughs> it's a musical it's an african musical instrument that helps to um create a very nice sound to music and but it's more i, I kind of like use it just to meditate and then guide my mindfulness so i use someone who seeks balance 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 in all of your doing um in all of your you know your daily life do you come back and you have a deep reflection about who you are um, what you were during the day and what you want for your life are you able to look deeper into your soul and then tell yourself that I'm on the right path and if I'm not on the right path what are the information that I need what are the resources that I need to actually push myself to the right path you know so that is mindfulness seeking balance in your daily life in everything else that you do number five of knowing if you have self-love is self-isolation the more you isolate yourself the more you find it hard the more you find it hard to understand the world because you cut yourself off the world you feel that you are a failure you are the worst person ever there's nothing going on in your life and so you just kind of like withdraw because you feel that people don't understand you and you are the only one who is going through this in the world like everything about you is more personalized okay very individual very individualized so much that you think no one else sees what you're going through all right so self-isolation very high self-isolation can make you lose self-love but it will be very difficult to face your challenges positively and you should always remember that in in all kinds of um, you know challenges there's always an opportunity and if you find it very hard to see these opportunities in yourself it means that you lack self-love and then number six of self-love the component of self-love is over identification there are some people who just feel they are all or nothing people there's no gray area either i'm a failure or i'm a success some feel that they are not perfect they want perfection they are carried away by their emotions sometimes their emotions tells them that everything around you is bad is wrong and they go deeper into their emotions and they are sad people they become very moody there's lots of pleasure there's lots of motivation and they over identify or they over exaggerate the current challenge or problem or whatever that they are going through they just are not able to bring themselves out of that problem look at the problem analyze it and then try to work on it so you see self-love this is what i talk about self-love imagine you lack all of this and you're going into a relationship tell me what are you going to do over there because at the end of the day if you cannot even have self-regulation skills or self-management skills and love yourself through this it means it'd be so difficult to offer the self-love to another person and you find both of you suffering find both of you having communication problems because you are not even able to understand who you are and what your needs are and how to even you know attend to your own needs neither are you able to attend to someone else's needs now i want you to know that there are needs and these needs can also act as values how do you know that you need something is it the absence of it is it a lack of it or the gains of it for example how do you know you need food all right is it that okay you look around and you know okay there's no food and then you feel i need food or um do you feel that oh there is food but it's small the lack of like is there but it's small or is it that the gains you look around and like even though the food is there you are not gaining much of it 
right so there's nothing to gain from this food there should be abundance where you could even sell and get money or something so people define needs differently and if you are in a relationship and your needs are not truly being defined you make it hard for the other person to attain to these needs so on the Maslow theory of needs there are six right so there's the physiological needs there's a safety needs there is um, love and belonging self-esteem and self-actualization needs now you need to understand that on the physiological needs there's what we call the food air water um, and other basic needs that we need for survival and these physiological needs are mainly for survival all right now when you go to the second need which is the safety need, it's talk about food you know it talks about security talks about um, shelter employment and, and and the rest so after your physiological need then man gets to think about okay where do I stay is is it safe to, to to live here is it secure am i protected am i in a well you know neighborhood and all of that then if if you are secure that of course i have a well-meaning um, neighborhood then man thinks about love and sense of belonging everyone wants love and freedom and friendship and family and a home and happiness and joy so as you progress in life as, as you attain the basic needs in life then you gravitate towards what knowing where to actually find a sense of belonging that is your social group or your support network and this is where you get to choose your friends and your friends also choose you this is where you decide your job or your employment or your freedom and, and and that is why man wants freedom okay so at this stage what you want is freedom you don't want to be in a relationship whereby there is no freedom for you to face your dreams um to go through what you want in life is a sense of belonging and sense of belonging should even first off start with your physiological need if you're dating someone there should be a physiological need the person should be able to provide for you the person should be able to have safety protection security should give you all of that and then sense of belonging are you compatible with the person as well you see then it goes into what self-esteem needs so after you have found the three needs downward then you go into self-esteem the person you are with the person you are with are they making you proud are they making you happy do you feel that you belong do you feel that um yeah i am being boosted i'm being happy everything about me there's self-acceptance there's self-love that and then into this relationship i am also myself i am not just someone else that i don't i do not want to be or i'm i'm acting like like a different person because my partner wants me to be a different person it doesn't work like that so when you are up at the self-esteem needs it's more about the two of you understanding each other and allowing each other to evolve in your own ways while supporting the relationship I always believe that a relationship is more of a Venn diagram as in the set A the set B and the intersect C all of this needs to be worked in a balanced way whilst growing uh, positively okay so the man the woman and the relationship you should all grow and you should all grow by supporting one another and allowing and one another to be yourselves right now the third the, sorry the last of the Maslow hierarchy of needs is what self-actualization this is where you have done great things but with still physiological needs safety needs um, sense of belonging esteem needs as well you, you cannot have self-actualization goals and losing all of the four downward doesn't work like that you still have them with your partner with your friends with your loved ones knowing that yeah now i have achieved my dreams or my goals in life and but i'm not a lonely person right you have everything that you need but you are not um lost in life you see you're still Raining, you're still having all the needs met in you and there's happiness and there's there is still sense of belonging you know so these are just basic forms of needs that you should know if you're going to a relationship you and your partner needs to talk about your needs you need to talk about your values as well because this will create a like-minded conversation and this will bring clarity to your relationship okay so now we are back again so we are going to talk about boundaries okay because needs can access boundaries so uh, we need to understand what types of boundaries we have and then where you belong so boundaries simply means what is okay for me and what is not okay for me i know there's this um, what's the name uh is it argument or debate about spouses going through their uh, partner's phone or laptops and all of those ones 
well it depends if you did not set clear boundaries in the beginning of the relationship this could be a miscommunication i mean it has to be discussed you have to look into each other's eyes to know that telling my spouse that i don't like you going through my phone is it is what they truly want in a relationship you need to read the verbal and non-verbal cues you know part one i spoke about verbal and non-verbal cues you need to see through them you need to hear through them even if they might be lying that okay it's okay but is their body accepting the answer they are telling you all right so these kind of conversations do not think it's not important <laughs> so boundaries we have healthy boundaries porous boundaries and rigid boundaries okay so rigid boundaries an example of a rigid boundary is where people are not they do not share okay they have a very close circle they do not trust they are not people pleasers they said no almost all the time and they keep people at a distance do not come close to me do not touch me <laughs> okay and they don't trust people that they, they, they just don't care okay they, they just don't care they are mostly very consumed in themselves okay so that is rigid boundaries now Porous boundaries is where you can trust everyone, you overshare, uh, you, you, you tell people everything about you, they know even before they get to know who you are. You allow people into your space, you let them use your things. And when I say porous, just weak, it's a weak boundary. Everything comes, everything goes like computer garbage in, garbage out. All right. And, and this kind of boundaries are, are what a lot of people suffer with just because of what people pleasing did because they do not say no. And so because they find it hard to say no, they have all kinds of people in their lives and in their space doing things they do not want and they, they begin to be passive communicators. All right. Now for the healthy boundaries, mm -mm -mm, my type. I say my type because, yes, yeah, psychology has helped me. I used to, to like people so much and um, over, oh, be overly nice to people, but I think now I'm able to gauge that. So healthy boundaries is when you select people. You choose who you want to come into your life. You choose when to share, when not to share, who to trust, who not to trust. You choose to be involved in someone's life or not to. You choose who to support and not to support in your life. You choose when to use your time with who with what <laughs> you know so healthy boundaries are very healthy people when i say very healthy people i mean they are the assertive communicators they will communicate to you knowing that they have put their feelings their thoughts and their needs into the communication as well as yours and, and you can have a, a great compromise with no one getting up feeling that i've been cheated or i've not been treated well i've been taken for granted or taken advantage of no very very healthy people so sometimes people think they show off or they are bossy or they are something but that is just how they want to communicate and they do that because they know the benefits of unhealthy boundaries i would also like you to you know observe the fact that respect is what is called boundary boundary can 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 act as what you respecting the person you knowing that this is not my space it's you you knowing that being in a relationship is a choice. It's more of a partnership than this one side that relationship called Confucian philosophy from the Chinese yeah, social ethic. So it's not that, oh, you, you are the woman, respect me more or obey me more or, or submit to me more or love me more or, or do this more. No, you see, if you have such a mindset, yeah, a lot of women might in the first place act like that because they will know that that is what you want and give it but at the end of the day a human being is a hundred percent thinking faculty and they are we are made that way in order to stand for our rights not to be enslaved um, not to be used okay so if you have such a confusion philosophy as in I am the man you are the woman Oh, I'm the elder sister, you are the junior, you know, you're the junior sister. Uh, and then I'm the husband, you are the wife. And then obe obedience comes just from the lesser being. And they are more as a dumping concept, right? Or, or they're seen as objects and you are just the subject or more of uh, the servant master relationship. It's not going, it's not a relationship. That kind of social ethic will not work in relationships this is what you should understand that in partnership this is what happens in partnership 
you give off what you want from the other person okay i'm not going to say 50 50 because i do not believe in that but if you want respect you give off respect okay if you want love you give off love if you want submission you give up submission if you want any form of an activity or an attitude or character or behavior you give that to receive so you earn it whether you're a man or you are a woman you earn that it's not just given on a silver platter people might just do that in the beginning but for a long run it will decline because someone who gives and doesn't receive will be drained okay and when they become drained that is where you start to see the defensive mechanisms showing that's why they become passive aggressive and you won't wonder now the types of boundaries okay there's physical boundary physical boundary simply means your body your space um how you want people to touch you or not to touch you um it's more about everything in your environment okay so do you want to shake hands are you the handshaker are you a close talker there are people who when they are talking they just want to be close to you the whole time you can even smell the scent in their mouth or, um, and all of that so if you are not you can just say hey back up in a very nice say, hey back up stand there you know you don't want to act as if hey please don't come near me in a very you know that attitude you don't want to give that but physical boundary simply means you restraining people coming closer to you or getting too close to you for your comfort you know then we have um emotional boundary you're like this is more about your emotions what do you share what you do not want to share what you feel like letting someone know and not and your moods as well um your your feelings okay do they matter do someone else feel that they matter and when you share are you being heard are you seen you know are you really um, being received even in your most vulnerable state and do these people take good care of you in your most vulnerable state so that is what we call what emotional boundary and whatever you share are they able to keep it confidential and private number three is time what you decide to use your time for so sometimes you can see um sometimes you can hear someone say what what do you use your time for um <laughs> you don't call me you don't talk to me so what do you do at all it's more like they want you to <laughs> They want to employ you to just use all your time for them more, more than just a relationship know that you are being employed into this relationship to work for them as in yeah this is what i understand because people's time i use the way they want to with what they want to at where and with whom so you see it, it's more of you understanding that just like i want to use my time i think i should allow my partner also decide what they want to use their time for so that you are not you know misconstrued into thinking that this person really wants to be with me when they don't want to. the fact that the person doesn't talk to you always and all of them you have to keep reminding them wanting and needing their attention means that they are not really into you as you think so this is a clear effect for you to know that um it's not working we are not so this is the part two of understanding love true self-love and i just have some assignments for you to do so number one this is the assignment sit down with your partner and then discuss about your boundaries okay like i told you there are three subtypes which is the porous healthy and rigid boundaries and then the main types of boundaries are the physical emotional time sexual intellectual and material boundary talk about this and then let me hear from you in the comment section if you have any question to ask so I would like you to subscribe to my channels and comment as more as you can. Let's talk about communication in relationships. Let's talk about self-love. Let's try to understand whatever that this entails so that we can have a lasting and a productive relationship. We don't want to spend our time on something that will not help us to grow. So, bye and have a good evening. <laughs>